guys, I'm Evan Espet, a Spermography player. You're watching Gareth Mason on Walking Tour with G-Man. What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video is talking points of Springboks versus the All Blacks that took place on Saturday morning, South African time, obviously. New Zealand and Australia, it was um, evening. What a cracking game it was. Who would have thought a draw was going to be the outcome? The bookies had gone for the All Blacks. I think a lot of people have gone for the All Blacks. I went for the All Blacks, and trust me, I've got a few fines for that. Um, but man, did the Springboks turn it around and come back and really uh, show that they are still here to play competitive rugby. I mean, what an outcome for a very interesting game. You've got so many talking points, actually. And first off is the halves. First off, completely dominated by South Africa. Second off, completely dominated by the All Blacks. It was amazing how that was pretty much the decider of the games. And the fact that we got a draw which equalized it was unbelievable, in my opinion. I thought it was uh, absolutely incredible and uh, credit to both teams for really fighting it out. Again, it wasn't the prettiest game of rugby. A lot of mistakes from both teams, a lot of things that they need to work on as they go forward. Um, I think as we move forward, we're going to see a lot of these small mistakes being um, like gelled up so that they are fully ready for the Rugby World Cup. Obviously, it is progression stage, it's building stage for the Rugby World Cup for all these teams in this Rugby Championship. So we will see a lot of um, mishaps and mistakes here and there. But overall, from two world-class teams to really battle it out, to get a, a draw in the end, it just once again just shows the rivalry between South Africa and New Zealand and how strong it is and how passionate both teams are when they play against one another and how important a victory is to, to them. I mean, look at the reaction from South Africa when we got that draw. It was like a win for us and it really was pretty much that way because it's, it, it keeps us on the top of the log. Um, we're fought back and I mean the last three results between these um, great nations is a, wi a win for South Africa, a win for New Zealand and a draw. And that's all Russie's coaching stats too so that's brilliant that we've come a long way to really be competitive and forget about those days of the 57 or 53 nil and all those massive results where we just talk about New Zealand dominating I mean that's it now for two years we we haven't been able to or we haven't lost in New Zealand which for me as a South African fan um, and as a Springbok lover it, I think it's a great improvement and I, I'm very proud of that team for that other talking points, obviously All Blacks dominated the stats, the possession, the territory, they really fought back and controlled the game in a, in a great way and for that I give them a lot of credit. Um, they definitely woke up in that second half, Steve Anson definitely had a good talk or two to the players in order to get them all regrouped and focused because they definitely look sharper and um, honestly at the 67th minute, sorry, 77th minute I was picking up the tripod, getting ready to take it into uh, the room to do a quick video. And as I touched the tripod, things started happening. And then we were on the attack and then Colby got the ball, did that chip kick. And as in the words of Aaron Smith, Herschel Yankees just came out of nowhere and got that amazing try, which, which sealed the deal. And then credit to Andre Pollard, which people are forgetting on that tough kick. I mean, the, the pressure, the booze, and everything else, that was a great kick, and, and well done, team, for slotting that over, because that could have also lost the game. So well done, team, and capitalizing on the points. Big, big moment. Then th th another talking point is the referee. There were clear mistakes from him, from both sides, um, but there were also talking points within um, the knock-on uh, before the penalty, that, that last penalty. Um, Dwayne Vermeulen went to the ref and said, listen, there was a clear knock on and um, ref wouldn't have any of it. And I think that's disappointing from ref and TMO that this wasn't discussed because it was a clear knock on. They went to the replay straight after that. Okay, we had South African commentary. I don't know what um, Marshall and them had to say about it, but it was a clear knock on and that was a missed call. So for me, I was very disappointed in that. Um, cheeky move but it's happened before so I'm not going to harp on too much 
Broden, uh, uh, Bowden Barrett stealing a few um, extra metres going forward, or extra sandy metres, whatever it was. As soon as he placed the ball, he waited for the ref to turn his back, and as the ref walked away, Bowden kicked it forward in order to gain more metres. Um, but, you know, it wasn't that much, but it's still advantage going further. So I'm disappointed in that. Um, TMO could have called that. Um, but yeah, shit happens. And then I want to talk about the Achilles Snayman part because there's a lot of angry New Zealand supporters who are really attacking certain fans. But if you really look at this video, Brody was coming in from the side. So that was a clear, clear out from Achilles Snayman. Brody was definitely towards our end and also there were offside players as well in the row. So that, was, that wasn't the blatant... Um, charge to to destroy Brody. It was just he was in the wrong place and he got nailed for it. And I think if it was the other way around, same thing would have happened. Um, so for me, that wasn't a big call. TMO saw it. Um, the main ref saw it, although he wasn't <laughs> hot. Although he started off okay, but anyway. But yeah, so refereeing points are the talking points and it always makes me nervous for as we build up to a World Cup situation where referees need to be on top point otherwise it could make or break a team but um, other than that for South Africa talking points Herschel Yankees a clear clear looking favorite for taking on number nine first on and I will back it 100% I thought he was outstanding I love the way he plays his quickness with the ball the run the speed um, the, the acceleration within this player and the determination within him I think is brilliant look i know five clack is an outstanding scrum off but they, like i said in the recap video there have been times where he's messed up to constantly on his box kicks i mean five can run five can run and when he runs something happens positively towards south africa so he needs to do more of that and less of this bloody box kicks and i know a lot of you clipped me about it i know it's not necessarily his fault it's Russ's fault because Herschel was doing it too. But it needs to stop because it's not working. Pollard was kicking a lot of the ball away. We weren't getting that ball out. Meanwhile, we were playing back to back and forth. And so All Blacks had the, the ability to run it. President Colby, I thought, was absolutely outstanding. He kept Yoani on point. He flattened him when he needed to be flattened. And the height difference is like David Goliath. It's like me standing probably next to one of you guys. It was outstanding what Colby had to offer. Centers looked weak for me. Um, I wasn't too impressed. Um, I definitely think Andre Estesen could do something a little different with a few others that are coming in. We called back some, so it could be interesting. Alakanya am. I'm a big fan of him. Uh, I thought he was great. Delanda just wasn't that sharp for me. He didn't stand out. Dwayne Vermeulen didn't stand out for me. I expected a lot more from him. So a lot of workings for Springboks, but a lot of positives to talk about too. If we had to speak two years ago, we would never have said South Africa will win in the dying moment. South Africa did uh, draw and won last year. So it's amazing to see how far we've come and grouped. For New Zealand, I think they've got an amazing squad on their hands. Definitely under pressure. TJ also a lot of knock, oh, the odd knock on, but I mean, it's pure pressure. I mean, it's there's so much adrenaline going through these players. They're bound to make the odd mistake. I mean, I still rate TJ Perinara as one of the best scrum offs. So I would still lead with him. I thought it was a clever tactic having Barrett at fullback, and then you got Richie at at. Um, 10. Yeah, Richie was a bit fumbly at the start, but I mean, that's part of flies. It's, it's a big moment playing against a team like South Africa. It's a big moment playing for your country and a big moment to also be on the lines with Bowden Barrett looking behind you kind of thing. So it's a lot of pressure on him. So I don't think you can fault him too much. I think he's an outstanding player. I think it's a good strategy having Bowden and, and, and Richie in the same team because then you've got the choice of kicking which I think is an absolutely strong point to have. So for me, I think that's a good strategy, and I definitely think Steve will use it a bit, maybe even put Barrett at centre. But uh, Bowden, I thought, had a good game. I thought he was a lot more sharper than he was last time he played South Africa. Except that little cheap moment, but we'll forgive him for that. I thought it was quite <laughs> sneaky, but hey, it's rugby. These things happen. But um, yeah, Kieran Reid, he was a bit quiet. I know... A lot of people are slaughtering him in the media, um, especially on Facebook. I saw someone post, worst captain 
all, uh, all Blacks have ever had. I think that's absolute rubbish. He's a great captain, great leader, and I think he's just, it's, it's tough games. Look who you're playing against. And then, also, have All Blacks lost number one position since Richie era? No, he's continued it. So give the man a little bit of credit. I think he's a brilliant player. So, yeah, man, this, it, you can go on for days about this game, but overall, I'm very satisfied with the result. I think it's a good, um, brings out a good point plan of how these two teams are gelled together and how they're going to play. And it just makes you not have a clue of where the World Cup's going to go now. Is it going to go South Africa first or New Zealand first in that group stage? We don't know. And that's what makes it flipping exciting. Let me know your thoughts, your talking points in the comment section down below. I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. New Zealand, uh, sorry, Australia and Argentina fans, don't worry. Recap is coming soon. I've just been busy and I needed to get this one up because it's been talked about quite a bit. Thanks so much for watching. I always appreciate the support. Welcome to the new subscribers. Subscribe if you are new and turn on the bell notification. And I'll see you real soon for another video. Stay safe and never give up. Cheers. Make sure you subscribe to his channel for all Rapid content. Stay safe and never give up.